Good afternoon, everybody. It's Monday, August 17th, and today I want to discuss with you how to water your fig trees that are being grown in containers. And since I began this garden channel, I have had a lot of people ask me, how often should I water my fig trees in containers, and how much water should I give them? And before I get into the details of this video, I need you to understand that I cannot tell you exactly how often to water and how much water to give. For example, I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, so I'm going to have to give my fig trees more water more frequently than somebody that lives, say, in the northeast but I'm also not going to have to give my fig trees as much water as somebody that lives in the dry, arid conditions of the desert southwest. So what I'm going to do here is to show you the telltale signs that tell you that your fig trees need water. But before I show you how to tell when your fig trees need water, I need to dispel a myth. And that myth is because figs are considered to be drought tolerant trees, that you can let the containers dry out and that they can go for a long time without having water in containers. And that is completely false. And I'm going to show you exactly why that is the case. Here I have one of my fig trees and all of these fig trees that are in ground I planted on March 29th. So they've only been in ground for four and a half months to date. So if I simply remove this top layer of mulch and I dig around a little bit, you know what I'm going to find? I'm going to find roots and just digging through the first inch or two of the soil, I find just a plate of these spaghetti-like roots that are growing everywhere. And these roots are feeder roots that develop all over the surface of the ground. And fig trees have an incredibly expansive underground root system. And it is this expansive underground root system that helps the fig tree survive the arid climate of the Mediterranean. In Mediterranean climates, it doesn't rain pretty much at all from roughly June 1st to September 1st. So there's basically a three month drought. But because of the expansive root system of the fig trees, a mature fig tree will have miles and miles of roots. So they are able to seek out the moisture contained underground and hunt out that moisture. So even though it hasn't rained in months, they're able to find the moisture with their spaghetti-like root systems. In addition, if you've ever seen what the beaches of the Mediterranean look like, they're very rocky. The Mediterranean has a large limestone shelf and those limestone pockets that are in the soil, they actually hold moisture very well. So when the rains come in the Mediterranean during the winter, those limestone pockets soak up the water and they retain that moisture. So the fig spider-like root systems are able to survive off of the water in those limestone pockets. And that's a big reason why garden lime is so darn good for figs. So those expansive underground root systems in in-ground fig trees are experts at seeking out water. But what about fig trees in containers? What happens if I pull this up? And you will see that root mass, it just looks like a giant plate of spaghetti, but it is completely root bound in there. And because it is root bound, there is literally nowhere for these roots to go to seek out moisture. So once the containers completely dry out, there's no recourse for this tree. And if you let your containers completely dry out, you will start killing those roots. So it is very important that you never let your fig trees in containers completely dry out, or you may injure the tree, possibly permanently. So how do you know that your fig trees need water? Well, it's actually a pretty simple observation, and all you have to do is look at the top of the soil line. So here you'll see my Olympian fig tree. And the first thing that you must notice is that I have a layer of mulch on top of all of my fig trees. And that is absolutely imperative. You have to have a layer of mulch on your fig trees that are in containers and in ground as well, really, because that helps regulate the moisture and it stops the sun from baking the top of the fig roots and from drying out the top of the soil line too quickly. But one thing that you'll clearly notice here is that the medium inside this container is starting to pull away from the container. There's a gap right there. And here you can see there is a solid, probably half inch or more gap in the container between the container and the medium. And I can stick my whole finger in there. I can put several fingers in there. And when that medium starts pulling away from the containers and contracting like that, 
you know that your fig trees are drying out and you have to water them. And that right there is the best way to tell when your fig trees need water. You don't want to wait until the containers are so dried out that the fig trees are starting to wilt in their leaves because if the leaves are beginning to wilt, that means that the fig tree has completely exhausted its internal stores of water and damage is starting to take hold. So you really want to go by the soil and how it looks inside the container. So now that we've established that many of my fig trees are dry and are in need of watering, I'm going to show you how I water them. And I go with a very low-tech approach. I use a simple garden hose and a watering wand so I can water my trees without having to bend over because it saves my back. Now what's important to note is when your fig trees are very dried out, and this goes for any potted tree, the medium inside the pots become hydrophobic. It's difficult for a potting medium to absorb moisture once most of the moisture has been removed. So I want to show you what happens if I were to simply just flood this container on high flow. And here you will clearly see that water is just pouring out of the base of that container because I hydrated it too quickly and the medium just can't hold on to the moisture because it's partially hydrophobic. And this is something that you don't want to do because when you wash out your containers like this, you're flushing out the nutrients. And once you wash them away, it's gone forever unless you add more with fertilizer. So the way that I deal with a hydrophobic potting mix is what I like to do is I like to take six fig trees that I know need water and I like to take my watering wand and give them a three second shower on the tops of each of the containers. Just like this, just like that. I only like to give them maybe about half an inch of water and then while that soaks in, I go to my other containers and I do the exact same thing and the purpose for doing this is when I wet the top, it gives my soil medium a chance to absorb that water because if I pour too much in at once, it's just going to run out the bottom drain holes. But if I let the water soak into the medium first, it will lose its hydrophobic properties and it will better absorb the water because wet medium actually absorbs the water faster. You could already see how much more quickly it's draining down. And now that we've moistened the tops of all of our containers and they're no longer hydrophobic, now we can give them a more generous watering. So I'm going to go ahead to all of these containers and I'm going to give them all about a five second blast with my garden hose. And I'm going to let that soak into the containers once again. And because the medium is no longer completely hydrophobic, it is not going to leak out of the bottom drain holes as rapidly. Then I'm going to go back around again and I'm going to do them again just for another two or three seconds just to make sure that they are saturated. And as you can see, despite all the water that I put inside of my trees, nothing is running out of those drain holes. And the reason why is I primed the soil medium first before I deluged them with water. So because the potting mix was no longer hydrophobic, everything was evenly absorbed without spilling out of the bottoms. And how do you know if a fig tree doesn't need water? Well, we had a deluge of rain yesterday. We got four and a half inches of rain in one day. And in front of me in this yellow container, I have my Chicago hardy fig tree. And as you can see, this tree is much smaller than most of my other fig trees. And if I look down at the drain holes at the bottom, that drain hole there is still very moist in there. So I know the bottom of that container is still wet. And unlike the other trees that I showed you, you can clearly see that none of the medium is pulling away from the container in this pot. So because the medium is not pulling away from the sides of the container and those bottom drain holes are still wet in there, I'm going to skip this tree because it does not need water. And using those simple awareness techniques, that is how you know when your fig trees need water and how to water them. And although this video is about fig trees, you can apply the techniques to pretty much any potted plant. And it holds true for every potted plant that you cannot let them dry out completely or it can permanently injure the plant. 
Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. If you begin your shopping with our Amazon links, even if you don't decide to purchase anything in the storefront, we still wind up getting a little piece of the pie, so it helps us keep making these videos. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. What? What is it? What do you want? Oh, are you hungry? Oh, you're hungry? Uh oh, you're hungry. Okay, all right, you want dinner? Okay. Okay, Dale, now that you have eaten, are you still hungry? Are you hungry? Hungry? Are you hungry? See, he's not hungry, he already ate.